In this video, we're going to look at how to evaluate normal probabilities or Gaussian random variable probabilities. The, remember, we have the standard normal distribution function. We're going to use the standard normal distribution function to calculate our probabilities. So remember, our standard normal random variable was equal to x minus its mean all divided by the variance. We're going to define a function here called phi of capital phi of z. We'll define it as the probability that our random variable z will be between zero and little z. And I, sorry, I don't really didn't really make them d very different in size, but this is our random variable here in the middle, and this is the limit that we're going to integrate to. So we're going to integrate our density function from 0 to z, since our probability is going from 0 to z. We're going to integrate this small phi from 0 to z. So I plug in our, our limits will be 0 to z, and our density function for our standard normal random variable, and we saw in a different video, is 1 over the square root of 2 pi, e raised to the minus t squared over 2. Since we're integrating with respect to t, we have t squared over 2 in the exponent. Now if you remember I mentioned this we cannot evaluate this function in a closed form solution. In other words we can't find this integral. We can't solve this integral. So we have to solve this integral numerically and just find values for the standard normal uh, probability or standard normal random variables. So we'll look at um, the standard normal random variable probabilities and then <clears throat> we'll see how we can use those tables to find the probability of general normal random variables. Okay, so we have this this integral that we're going to solve. In this case we're going from 0 to z. So let's look at a quick example and you'll see how we actually do this solution for our standard normal. Let's find the probability that our random variable z will be between 0 and 1.53. Okay, so again, we cannot plug into this integral and solve it and then just enter our limits, 0 and 1.53. So we have to use a table. Now, the, I'm going to go to the next page because we have to look at the table and solve the problem at the same time. So let's, let's um, look at the table. This is a reference from a Shams outline and notice that <clears throat> it's showing us the what it's using as the definition for the table. The definition is integrating this function from 0 to z. It might be hard, hard for you to see but we're only integrating from 0 to z. If you look at different references they're going to use different they may use different definitions for their tables. So as long as you know what the definition is, you can use that to find your probabilities. Okay, so that's what this table is using. So that's what I'm going to be using in my examples. So let's go back to the, the problem. Again, we're going to find the probability at z is between 0 and 1.53. Okay, so that lines up exactly with what the table is giving us. 0 to, in this case, z will be 1.53. And we'll get that integral under the, under the curve. Now to use the table, notice that it's got z here and we've got a, some values down the left hand side and also values across the top. The way you use this table is we want to find the probability from 0 to 1.53. Well if you look at z down this column, it goes. We, there is a row that has 1.5 but we want 1.53. The way to get the 1.53 is this, the column is the next digit in the value. So the first column is has a zero there. So this value here will be for z equals to 1.50. The next one will be for z equals to 1.51. And then the next one, 1.52. And finally, 1.53. So the value here, which is 0 0.4370, if you can see it, is the value that we want. So going back, I'm going to go backwards to our example. 
So we just, for our probability that we want to calculate, we just find that function evaluated at 1.53, and the answer is 0 0.4370. All right, so that's a, the easy, an easy problem to solve using that table and, and our standard normal random variable. All right, let's look at another problem, a little bit more difficult. We've got a probability, this time we want our standard normal, but we want it to range from minus 0.57 to 0.94. So how are we going to find that with using our table? All right, let's look at a plot, a real simple plot of what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the area under the curve from z going from minus 0.57 to 0.94. Now if we went from 0 to 0.94, we know we can that the area under the curve during that range is just the function that we have in our table evaluated at 0.94. So that'll give us this right hand portion of the area under the curve. So how do we find this portion over here? Well we know that the, I didn't really draw it very symmetric, but the function is actually symmetric. Um, I have a hard time drawing these things real symmetric. But the function should be symmetric and so this area under the curve from minus 0.57 to 0 is the same as if we went from 0 to 0.57. This area under the curve, therefore, is our function evaluated at 0.57. So we would get the, this area under the curve would be phi, capital phi of 0.57, and the area on the left hand, right hand side would be phi at 0.94. The total area will just be the addition of those two. So we'll have phi at 0.94, plus phi at 0.57. So if we go over to our table, let's look at 0.94 first. 0.9 is here, and then we go over to the column where we have 4. So here's our 4. So this is the area under the curve from 0 to 0.94. It's equal to 0.364. So I'll go back and show you that's what I wrote down. Point, sorry, 0.2, 0.3264. 0.3264. That's the value that was in the table. We also want the value at 0.57, so let's go back to the table. 0.5 is here. We need to go over to the column that's 0.7, which is right here. 0.2157. So we go back to our problem. 0.2517. We add those two up and we get 0.5421. So the total for the so the probability for z between minus 0.57 and 0.94 is equal to this 0.5421. Okay, so there's the solution. All right, I'm gonna skip over our table now. <clears throat> so what are the different possibilities that we have? Well, the one we just got done doing was with z, the first z being on the left hand side and the second z being on the right hand side. So it's z of, sorry, phi of z2 plus phi of the absolute value of z1. So we, we, that's what we ended up at calculating. Now all the rest of these you can, you can kind of figure out on your own. You really don't need to look at this or memorize these. Should be fairly easy to remember how to calculate them. Let's look at, suppose we had z1 and z2, both of them on the positive side then what do we want? We want the area underneath this curve from z1 to z2. Now if we have phi of z2, that gives us the area from 0 to z2, and phi at z1 gives us the area from 0 to z1. So the area that we want, we want to subtract off this part here from the one that went from 0 to z2. So we'll take the one from 0 to z2 and then subtract from it the other one and that'll that'll get rid of this part of the curve the area under the curve now for if they're both on the negative side we're gonna basically do the same thing but we're gonna use positive values now notice that the z2 here is the one closer to 0 so the phi of the absolute value of z2 will be this area here and the phi of the absolute value of z1 will be the area from here 
to here. So we just subtract off this area from the total area. So it'll be phi of the absolute value of z1 minus phi of the absolute value of z2. Now what do we do if we have like x probability of x less than or equal to z1 or I'm uh, sorry z less than or equal to z1. We want the area from minus infinity all the way up to z1. Now because our function is symmetric from 0 to minus infinity that area is equal to 0 0.5 it's equal to a half so remember from up to our mean we get 0 0.5 and then from our mean on to infinity we get 0 0.5 so if we're including all of this from minus infinity up to 0 that'll just be equal to 0 0.5 and then from 0 to z1 will just be that phi of z1 so we'll just add 0 0.5 for this left hand side and our phi of z1 for the right hand side. And then we do similar calculations for different uh, different um, situations. From In this case we just want from minus infinity up to z1 phi of the absolute value of z1 will be this area here so the area that we want will be 0.5 minus this area so it'll be 0.5 minus the absolute value of z1 and so on. Uh, again here we'll have 0.5 minus the value of z1 so we subtract off this and for this situation we have 0.5 on this side plus phi evaluated at the absolute value of z1. Now, How do we find probabilities in general? Suppose we have a random variable that's normal, it has a mean and a variance. We know we can make a standard normal from it and solving for z we end up with sigma sub x times z plus mu sub x you can you can see you know calculate that for yourself so if we're wanting to find the probability that x is between a and b we can plug in the solution you know we can substitute in x here so we have sigma sub z sigma times z plus mu we can subtract mu from all the components so we get a minus mu then in the middle we just have sigma times z and then b minus mu on this side then we can sub divide by sigma on all of these parts and we end up with on the left hand side a minus mu over sigma and then on the right hand side b minus mu over sigma so now we have a have a have the probability written in terms of our standard normal with z1 being a minus mu over sigma and z2 being b minus mu over sigma so we just have to do that calculation for those endpoints and then plug into our table using our table alright let's do an example if x is a normal random variable its mean is a hundred and its variance notice I got the variance here is a hundred we're going to find the probability that x will be less than 115, probability that x will be less than 93.6, and the probability that it will be between 87 and 113. Don't forget that we need to find the standard deviation, so take the square root of what's given, we get 10. Now the probability that x is less than 115, we'll plug that into our calculation, so we got 115 minus the mean over 10 that gives us 1.5 so we the probability that x is less than or equal to 115 is just our function evaluated at 0.5 plus point uh, sorry evaluated at 1.5 plus 0.5 so I drew a little plot here 0.5 is this side plus 0.15 and um, you can go back and look in the table we get 0.4332 plus 0.5 gives us 0.9332 the next one is point or 93.6. I'll do the calculation, plugging those values in. I get a negative 0.64. So we're down here, negative 0.64, the area under the curve there. And that'll be that one where we have 0.5 minus this function. And so we do that calculation. This one we have 87 and 113. I get a minus 1.3 and a 1.3. And those are so therefore they're both the same. 
I can calculate the same value for both of them, have two times that value, 